wake up the whole world now is a high time to awake out of sleep today i'm gonna show you the seed of the new world order and also the mark of the bees that they already have all they have to do is enforcing their law the whole thing is tied with religion that's why revelation chapter 13 verse 17 the bible says no one come by yourself notice it's a great honor thank you so much Friends, I'm gonna give you a little history and then I will tell you the power behind the scene, the new world order. Constantine was the one that who united the church and stayed together. Notice during dark ages, pagan Rome, when he marched them to Tiber River, they said they was baptized. So when they came to the church, they was either statue worshippers. So when they brought their statues in Roman Catholic Church, they start naming them Christian name, Jupiter and all this thing. They call them Peter and Rosary and all this paganism that they brought to Roman Catholic Church. And some of the Christians they don't like so they protest against that's why they call them Protestants or Protestant so they set up their Jesuit order during 1500 the reason they said they are Jesuit order is to destroy the Christians that they protest against their paganism I'm tired of people saying Christianity is a crutch it's not a crutch it's a cross this planet is covered in blood as a consequence of people who stood for righteousness and truth. They also infiltrate the state to control the whole world. The Jesuit, they created Masons and now they got Skull and Bones, the Illuminatis, all them secret societies, friends. And what is Obama and all them powers, they all belong to secret societies. I love everybody, I don't have a choice if I want to go to heaven, but I got to tell you the truth. You're right, we must move as quickly as possible to a one world government. A one world religion under a one world leader. So as he began to travel the world, over 100 trips in his 25 years, the world was watching. His first trip to a conference in Mexico in 1979 instantly transformed the world's idea of the papacy. Some five million jubilant people in one crowd, it was said to be the largest ever. Among those surprised, was John Paul himself. The whole thing is tied with Bible. The church and state is going to unite in the last days and they will bring the mark of the beast that the Bible says. So notice. You can from circumference and them. I did, your own country. Yes. And it was uh, successful. Successful, you have some decisions. It's not so easy to respond. The Iraq war has been another foreign policy challenge, beginning with John Paul's papacy. Other foreign policy priorities for Benedict include pushing for peace in the Holy Land and decrying rising secularism in Europe. He's also been quietly working to establish relations, something that was not possible during the last papacy, largely because of John Paul's role in the fall of communism in Poland. The Chinese obviously didn't want John Paul II running around China doing the same thing. Uh, Pope Benedict is, is not that kind of a threat to China. So. Most of the time in places around the world, Vatican diplomats work outside the spotlight, where experts say they often have an advantage. Some question how much government leaders of today truly listen to what the Pope has to say. And that, observers say, is a moral authority that can't be measured by economic strength or military divisions. A moral authority Benedict hopes to draw upon when meeting with U.S. officials and speaking before the United Nations. I'm Kim Lawton in Washington. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. Pope Benedict XVI is calling for a new world financial order. A document entitled Charity and Truth was released just hours before the G8 summit. Friends, the Jesuit order, they also infiltrate every religion especially Sunday churches. That's why Revelation chapter 17 called this power whore. Notice, the mother of harlot. Jesus Christ is the one who died for the whole world and he's drawn everybody to himself. But this power, they don't want you to go to Jesus Christ. They want you to go to them and confess your sin to them. 
So notice what Revelation chapter 18 says. And they also infiltrate the king's president. So notice. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen. And is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornications. And notice, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Friends, now I'm going to tell you the mark. Notice this power, the mark of the beast. Because notice if the Bible says the mark of the beast, means this power has a mark. The beast is a language that God is using for this power. And they themselves, they says in their own book, the book of Catechism, the old version, notice, they says Sunday worship is the mark of authority. The new version, they don't use the word authority, but at least, thank God, they still admit it, even the new version of Catechism. They still says they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Friends, the mark of the beast is not worldly speculations that sometimes you hear. Some people says, well, it's computer chip. Unfortunately, you don't find in the Bible. And some people says, you know, it's 666. But according to Revelation 13 verse 18, actually 666 help you to find the beast. What I mean is to identify the beast. But the Bible says the mark. The reason why I repeat and I kind of stretch it because I don't want you to miss it. It's a deception. Notice the mark of the beast. It's clear. It means the power, the beast has a mark. Constant to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. But unfortunately, Sunday churches, they adopt sun worship day for so many years they don't want to get rid of it but actually it's a pagan sun worship day sunday worship look even the spellings you'll find out matter of fact if you look at your calendar sunday is always begin as the first day of the week Unfortunately, they will skip and some people they don't know they will count Monday as the first day of the week Because according to Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 the devil will deceive the whole world So it's a deception so the devil you know he's in the process blinding the people including the Christian though Friends if you go to church Sunday notice the first day church now, you don't have the mark of the beast according to Revelation 14 and 13 unless the law is an enforce. That's why now you hear different country, they try to force in the people to not sell or do anything on Sunday because they try to enforce the law. But according to Bible, notice, United States is the one who's going to cause the whole world to worship. The beast, they are sun worship day, means Sunday worship, according to Revelation 13. So whenever United States enforce the law, then every country also going to enforce because they control the whole world. Every president on the Roman Catholic Church. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. And now because they control every president in every country, they are new world order. So now they are using the president to sign up laws and all kinds of rules like gay and lesbian. And now they don't want you to talk about Bible, you know, if you go to work, they don't want you to talk about Christ because you know they say it's offended they try to put the whole world in darkness they don't want people to know the truth just like what they did in dark ages they remove Bible from people and they put people in darkness so that they can control them that's what they're doing again notice what Bible says in Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 12 and do this knowing the time that now was a high time to awake out of sleep now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed the night is far spent the days at hand therefore let us 
cast off the walk of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. The time you have spent to study Bible a year, now you have to do it a couple of months. It's time to pray more and talk less. Friends, Jesus Christ is coming for the church without spot or wrinkle. Watch this. When Nazi Germany attacked Britain in 1940, Winston Churchill called on his people to defend Christian civilization. Today there is a new kind of battle in Britain and Christianity is again at stake. Dale Hurd reports from London. The coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Like British monarchs before her, she promised to maintain the laws of God and the true profession of the gospel. But Britain today is at war with the gospel and with itself. Christians who try to be Christians in the workplace risk being demoted or fired, and the government continues to push an aggressive gay rights agenda while threatening to criminalize Christian speech and practice. Christian politician and activist George Hargraves. Yesterday I got a letter from the Advertising Standards Authority of a complaint saying that my billboard that says Britain is a Christian country is offensive to atheists and other religions and it incites hatred against them. What nonsense. Britain is constituted as a Christian country. Daily prayers are said in Parliament whether atheists like it or not. The Queen is the head of the Church of England and therefore has to acknowledge God for her sovereignty over the nation. These things are written into not just our culture and our heritage but into our constitution. Great Britain is officially a Christian nation, and in fact at one time was the missionary base for the entire world, even sending missionaries to the new American colonies. But Britain today in practice is increasingly anti-Christian, and the cases of anti-Christian bigotry and discrimination are beginning to pile up. In response, Christian legal centers have mobilized. Lawyer Andrea Minicello Williams of Christian Concern for Our Nation warns that if British Christians don't step up now, Britain is on a path to criminalize the practice of Christianity in public. There's been a massive move by the secularist lobby to privatize religion. You can have faith so long as it doesn't affect you in the workplace, so long as you don't bring it into the workplace. Just make it private. It can't be public. It can't affect what you do in the public square. Christian Quabena Pete was forced to attend homosexual sensitivity training at work, administered by a lesbian. One of the things that she said was when she asked the question, what makes you all think that to be heterosexual is natural? At which point I walked out. He then wrote a letter to the sensitivity trainer explaining the Bible's position on homosexuality and that God loved her and he loved her. He was suspended. They said that by me telling them about the word of God, it's constituted harassment and intimidation. Quabena was just recently reinstated. Cases like Quabena's are repeated over and over in Britain. Doctors, nurses, adoptive parents deemed unfit because of their Christian beliefs. Christians are told not to speak about God in the workplace or they're punished for offending homosexuals or Muslims. Now the British government wants to pass a new equality bill that would force churches to hire practicing homosexuals or transsexuals. Christian lawyer Paul Diamond has been very successful in fighting Christian discrimination cases in the courts. In the United Kingdom, the homosexual agenda is militants, and they've been arresting Christians, jailing Christians for hate crimes, shutting off grants, constant litigation with the government, constant aggression, there's no live and let live. Your Christian values are wicked and evil and that's what they want everybody to believe. That sounds like a BBC program which portrayed a violent Christian beheading a Muslim. Britain's government TV has also put a Muslim in charge of all of its religious programming. Islam continues to advance in the UK in large part because the government and media give it almost a protected status while essentially persecuting its own state religion, Christianity. Many believe the architect of Britain's new anti-Christian culture was former Prime Minister Tony Blair, who championed gay rights. And during our interviews with Minicello, Williams and Diamond, they both offered the same warning to American Christians, that any anti-life or hate crimes legislation under the Obama administration will erode America's Christian base. This is all coming to America if you liberalize the laws, as President Obama has done. Do you know who Obama reminds every British person of? Tony Blair. 
charming, persuasive, convincing um, appearance of moderation, and then shoved all the Judeo-Christian values down, saying he was a Christian as he did it. So we know what's going to happen in America. We know what's going to happen to your 40% church attendance. It isn't 40%. It's going to be 20%. When the, when the federal and state government start saying, if you criticize homosexuality, the hate crime laws will apply to you Christians. Dale heard CBN News, London. Friends, the Bible said the darkness covered the earth and gross darkness the people. One of the things that this Babylon, the Bible also says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if you get time, read it, because that's how you're going to know that this power is the Antichrist, because this is the doctrine, the old time, dark ages, the reformers, they used to preach, and they point to this power, Antichrist, but now you don't hear no more. One of the things that they're doing is, they infiltrate almost every system, so they're using so-called movie stars, or famous, so to speak. And they train them how they can dress short shirts. And whenever they do that, because they know that if they wear any kind of shirt, the world is going to copy. And they're going to dress like them. So they come up with all kinds of Babylon pagan short shirts half naked dress the devils binding the world together to receive the mark of the beast and now the senses of rational being has become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make a right decision they don't know how they dressed they don't know how they eat that's why Revelation chapter 18, God help us to understand that this world, this earth has become demonic. The hateful bird ever unclean. This Babylon religion confusion true mixed with liar. When they front of the camera, they pretend like humble people. Hypnosis, they hypnotize in the world. The Antichrist hiding in plain sight. The Bible called this system the mystery. It's a mystery for a lot of people. And according to Revelation chapter 13, the whole world will wonder after the beast. Whenever this power, the force, the mark of the beast, the world is going to be wonder. They're going to be like, we thought they are humble, smooth walking, good people. Protocol: The Eastern Orthodox would be first in order, as they are, of course, first in priority in the Catholic Church's ecumenical responsibility. The Legate and Ecumenical Officer of the Eastern Diocese of the Armenian Church in America and President of the National Council of Churches in America. May I present Reverend Dr. Donald McCoy, representing the presiding Bishop Mark Hansen of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. May I present Bishop Jeremiah J. Park, Bishop of the New York Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Wesley Granberg Michelson, the General Secretary of the Reformed Church in America. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. Clifton Kirkpatrick, the stated clerk of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in the United States. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. William J. Shaw, President of the National Baptist Convention, United States. Your Holiness, may I present Bishop James Leggett, General Superintendent of the International Pentecost Holiness Church. Your Holiness, may I present Dr. Leith Anderson, President of the National Association of Evangelicals. Your 
ordinance, may I present Bishop David H. Benke, President of the Atlantic District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Dr. A. R. Bernard Sr., President of the Council of Churches of the City of New York. Your Holiness, may I present Elder Bernice King, daughter of the civil rights leaders Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. Your Holiness, may I present Reverend Jimmy Song Jilin, Executive Director of the Council of Churches of the City of New York. Your Holiness, may I present the Right Reverend Mark Sisk, Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of New York. Do you understand the language, Your Holiness? And this is how they call this power. He think he is God. That's what their teachings is all about. Friends, religious leaders, when they come to meet this power, they weren't black. Notice, dark color. They represent the sinners, and he represent God. And now listen to what Bible says. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is the chapter the Protestant Sunday churches, they are forefathers. They used to protest against this power during dark ages and they call them antichrist notice antichrist but now you don't hear from sunday churches anymore because they betray their forefathers let's start from verse 3 notice second thessalonians chapter 2 let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the fallen away comes first and the man of sin is revealed the son of predation who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sit as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Notice what it says in verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, the Jesuit order they set their own president in every country. They also create democracy and United Nations how they can finish the new world order. And if your president don't submit to their rules and give their power to them, they will pretend like you have a new weapons and they will take you and they will set another president that will submit to their rules so that they can finish the new world order. Friends, Saturday is always the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. Notice, and again, it's always Saturday. And that's why the Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath. Jewish nation, even though I'm not Jewish, they still keep the Sabbath, Saturday. And also, Encyclopedia, you will find it even different language. If you speak Spanish, Sabado means Saturday. You can also find in the Bible, according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, you're going to find that God created heaven and the earth six days, and the seventh day he rested, and that seventh day, it's Saturday. And then Jesus Christ, remember, when Adam and Eve they sinned, Jesus Christ came to redeem our soul, and he finished his work six days, Friday afternoon. Remember, that's why they call it Easter Friday or Good Friday. It says it is finished Friday and then he rested Saturday just like he rested Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 and Sunday the early day in the morning you will find in the book of Luke chapter 24 verses 1 to 3 you will also find in Luke chapter 23 verses 50 to 56 the seventh day is always Saturday until Constantine 321 he changed it from Saturday to his own pagan son creation worship day the devil behind the scene you are about to see the power God is going to fill up with his outpouring just like he did it for the first century the apostle church and then we're going to go forward and preach the loud cry the third angel's message we're going to protest against their pagan son worship day means their son they worship 
and then Jesus Christ will come just like Bible says if the day is not short no flesh will be saved but for the elect's sake means those who take a stand the day will be shortened friends this is a beautiful time in history because we only one step away from heaven the mark of the beast the worship issue in Revelation chapter 13 if you get time read it because Revelation chapter 13 verse 12 it's a worship issue and verse 15 it's a worship issue and verse 8 is a worship issue and the Bible help us to understand that behind the scene Revelation 13 is the devil he wants the whole world to worship him first you have to escape you have to study your Bible Christ is calling you whether you are Christian or not whenever you hear Sunday worship in any countries do not accept it God is going to protect you Bible says our bread and water will be sure your holiness on behalf of all of us gathered here today indeed on behalf of all the people of our beloved nation we welcome you back to America when a Catholic Jesuit learn Sunday churches they are doctrine and the Vatican second when they infiltrate their churches and they draw all their churches to so-called the mother of the church because they know they are doctrine and they can answer questions and preach so the members of the Sunday churches they think that all the pastors are faithful pastors so now it's all about my pastor says, my pastor says, my pastor says. And this is the crying that a lot of times you hear from them. Instead of them to study, to show thyself approved, just like Bible says, they're making the flesh their right arm. And some of them, when they learn the Sabbath truth, that is always Saturday, because their pastors has been hematized them for so many years. So when they go and they talk to their pastors, instead of them to talk to God and make decision based on that says the Lord they make their pastors make decision for them because that's how bad they hematize them they come right out and state exactly how they infiltrate any religious group they want they'll come in pretending to be a Pentecostal pretending to be a Baptist taking the leadership role and then completely subverting it from the inside Friends, don't let the devil use hypnosis preachers, whether it's the pastor or whoever they are, to tell you that you're not going to be holy. You're going to sin until Jesus Christ come. That's doctrines of the devils. When God says, be you holy because I'm a holy. When Jesus Christ sets you free, Bible says, ye shall be free indeed. If you think that God is bigger than the devil, then you're going to be holy by the grace of God. But if you think that you're the devil, notice your devil is bigger than God, then the devil is going to make sure that he keep you in darkness. He will keep you to sin until Jesus Christ come and then you're going to be doomed. Friends, God, His creation power. Genesis, when God said, let there be light. And there was light. So when God said, be, means His creation power. You can be holy by the grace of God. This is the old gospel. And now the devil's using, a, you know, hypnosis pastors. You know, all they want is, you know, money. Riding Mercedes and all kinds of expensive vehicles. They fail to be a Bible Christian. Christ is calling a humble instrument. It's time to take a stand. Forget yourself. Don't look for what's in it for you. It's time to look for what's in it for God. That's how apostles and disciples, they live. In the first century, Jesus Christ is coming for the remnant church. Miss left over. Our character, our life star is going to be like the first century, the church that Jesus Christ set up. Christ is coming. Believe that you're going to be holy. He's going to help you. It depends how you program yourself. If you are watching a Jesuit, Hollywood, worldly program, so-called television program, then the devil's going to use those pagans or infidels to preach you and you're going to be in darkness until Jesus Christ comes. No one needs say that his case is hopeless, that he can't live the life of a Christian. 
ample provision is made by the death of Christ for every soul. Jesus is our ever-present help in time of need. Only call upon him in faith, and he has promised to hear and answer your petitions. Oh, for living active faith, we need it, we must have it, or we shall fade and fail in the day of trial. The darkness that will then rest upon our path must not discourage us or drive us to despair. It is now that we must keep ourselves and our children unspotted from the world. It is now that we must wash our robes of character and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. It is now that we must overcome pride, passion, and spiritual slothfulness. It is now that we must awake and make determined effort for symmetry of character. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We are in a most trying position, waiting, watching for our Lord's appearing. The world is in darkness. But ye brethren, says Paul, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you. What are you doing, brethren, in the great work of preparation? Those who are uniting with the world are receiving the worldly mold and preparing for the mark of the beast. Those who are distrustful of self, who are humbling themselves before God and purifying their souls by obeying the truth, these are receiving the heavenly mold and preparing for the seal of God in their foreheads. Now is the time to prepare. The seal of God will never be placed upon the forehead of an impure man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of the ambitious, world-loving man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of men or women of false tongues or deceitful hearts. All who receive the seal must be without spot before God, candidates for heaven. Search the scriptures for yourselves, that you may understand the fearful solemnity of the present hour. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, Paul says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Who do we have here at the Vatican meeting with the Pope? This is Billy Graham, a Baptist, a Protestant, meeting with the Pope. The Georgian Patriarch meeting with the Pope. The Greek Orthodox Archbishop meeting with the Pope. He's meeting with the heads of various religions in Azerbaijan. Pope John Paul II in a Muslim country in Azerbaijan and all the different religions and leaders are out to meet him and pay him homage. The Dalai Lama at the Vatican meeting with the Pope. Who does he represent? Eastern mysticism. The Romanian Patriarch meeting with the Pope. In the first visit by a Roman Pontiff to a mainly Orthodox country in nearly 1,000 years, the Pope embraced Romania's Orthodox Patriarch and declared the time has come to put every form of fear and suspicion between their churches behind them. Pope's Romanian visit set stage for possible Russian trip. Mindful of his advancing years and with a trip to Moscow in mind, Pope John Paul II pushed ahead Sunday with efforts to break down barriers with Orthodox Christians. The Pope's visit part of his drive for reconciliation among the various Christian denominations as the new millennium approaches has spurred hopes for greater unity between the Roman Catholic and Orthodox churches in Romania, despite the conflict in neighboring Yugoslavia. Pope John Paul II's weekend visit to India concluded today in an atmosphere of religious harmony and unity. The Pope received a reverent welcome from leaders of Hinduism and seven other faiths. In turn, Indian leaders of the Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh, Muslim, Jain, Parsi, Jewish, and Baha faiths extended prayers of welcome to the Pope. India, with a population of one billion or more, is more than 80% Hindu. The LA Times, Pope calls talks with Iran leader promising. Katami, a Shiite Muslim, told the Roman Catholic pontiff that he hopes the two monotheistic faiths could join to inspire a more equitable world order. As he entered the Vatican, 
The 78-year-old pope looked relaxed and pleased as he accepted his visitor's gift. Katami is now president of the 55 Nation Organization of the Islamic Conference. This is Yasser Arafat. He was the leader of Palestine at the time. Notice that he's all smiles as he meets Pope John Paul II. And here's Katami, the former president of Iran. This is Tariq Aziz. This man is, was, was one of Saddam Hussein's top men in his cabinet that the Pope is on a higher plane than themselves. Who is this? This is Prince Charles and Princess Diana. And who do they represent? The Church of England, they, who had a big split with Rome many years ago. It's Tony Blair meeting with the Pope. And in case you don't know, brothers and sisters, when Tony Blair left office, but he flew to the Vatican the next day after leaving office to become a priest and a Roman Catholic. Is this man a Christian? No, this man is a communist and former president of the USSR that this man he is about to shake hands with helped to bring a collapse to along with Ronald Reagan and the CIA, which was predicted in the word. Sweden's crown princess Victoria meeting with the Pope. The Czech president meeting with the Pope. Nelson Mandela meeting with the Pope. Is this man a Christian? It's Vladimir Putin. Friend, this man is hardcore KGB, but he's at the Vatican meeting with the Pope. The Israeli Prime Minister meeting with the Pope. Even dictators are meeting with the Pope. The Philippines President, Gloria Arroyo, meeting with the Pope. Vicente Fox, former president of Mexico, meeting with the Pope. Friends, he's even speaking before the United Nations. And when the Pope of Rome speaks, the world listens. How many of you remember former Secretary of State Colin Powell? Where was he at when he was the Secretary of State for this country? He was at the Vatican meeting with the Pope. Former Democratic President Jimmy Carter meeting with the Pope, and this was during his presidency. Former Republican President Ronald Reagan meeting with the Pope. Former Republican President George H.W. Bush meeting with the Pope. Former Democratic President Bill Clinton meeting with the Pope. George W. Bush meeting with the Pope. And notice they're all wearing a black suit. Laura Bush at the Vatican with her daughter meeting with the Pope. Nancy Pelosi, she's about ready to kiss the hand of Pope Benedict XVI when he made an appearance here in the United States, April of 2008. Rome's reaction to the Constitution of the United States, of course, was not favorable because the whole papal system was built on the union of church and state. As our president talks about how we want to bring democracy to all these countries of the world. Well, why doesn't he want to bring a republic to these countries? We were a republic. We were never a democracy. The Jesuits had really assumed universal political power by 1750. As that book, Justin Fulton, that great author, right? Washington on the Lap of Rome, it was written about 1888. Washington on the Lap of Rome, written by this great preacher, Justin Fulton. And it shows how he calls it Rome and the Potomac, completely controlled by the Archbishop of Baltimore. There was a secret wire between Baltimore and the White House telling the President what to do, at least since the days of Grover Cleveland. Historian Thomas Hobbes says, if a man consider the origin of the great ecclesiastical dominion, he will easily perceive that the papacy is none other than the ghost of the deceased Roman Empire sitting crowned upon the grave thereof. Pope Leo said, we hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Some have come to the conclusion that Rome has changed, that she has repented of her bloody megalomanic past. But these evidences revealed in the very current acts and views of the system should send a clear signal to the world that Rome never changes. 
America was founded as a Christian nation, but it was also founded as an occult nation. And there have always been two parallel forces here in America, one the Christian, one the occult, dating back into the 1600s. And until you understand that, you can't understand anything going on in the world today. So the Pope, because he believes he's God on earth, he always dresses in white. And that's why every political visitor to the Pope always dresses in black. The Orthodox, the Muslims, the Eastern religion, sun worship, Zoroastrism, all of them bowed down to it. Friends, whenever they enforce their sun worship day, Sunday worship, whenever the law is enforced in your country, do not accept it. The mark of the beast in their forehead, symbolic in Revelation, your forehead means your decision. And also when Revelation says they are right hand means your action will follow your decision once you accept they are sun worship day when it's an enforced Sunday worship. Friends, take a stand. Christ is coming. He loved you so much so that when he was on the cross, Jesus Christ says, I thirst. So whenever you're in temptation, remember when he says, I thirst. Because of you and I. Order the great controversy. Notice the book, The Great Controversy. Because it's preparation. It will prepare you by the grace of God.